Hi, I'm Mr. Rip, and I want to welcome you to the next video in my Learn to Play series for Dawn of War 2 Retribution. Today, we're going to be talking about the different resources gathered in-game. These are used to build, upgrade, and reinforce your units. Basic resources are Requisition, Power, and the Global Resource. The Global Resource actually has six different names depending on the faction you are playing, so instead is often just referred to as Red by players. To start with, here are the basics. Requisition. This is the basic resource used to purchase almost everything else in the game, including other resources. Rec is used to buy new units, upgrade them, reinforce lost models, upgrade power nodes, and upgrade your HQ's tech tier. Requisition is generated at a rate of 264 per minute by your HQ building, and variable amounts per minute by requisition points. Requisition points vary in two ways. The first is that their starting values depend on how many players are on your team, and the second is that they mature every 20 seconds until they cap out. As a solo, such as in 1v1, requisition points start at 10 rec per minute and mature until they reach 30 per minute. As a duo, like in 2v2, requisition starts at 7 and mature up to 20 per minute. As a trio, as in 3v3, they start at 5 and mature up to 15 rec per minute. The different amounts generated depending on team size are not entirely necessary to memorize, but information is power, and this can be used to more precisely plan out a build order. Upkeep. Your requisition income will be impacted by your unit's upkeep. Upkeep is determined on a per model basis. In this example, heretics have an upkeep of 2.55 per minute per model, while Chaos Space Marines have 9.6 upkeep per minute per model. Upkeep is not factored in until you reach 30 population cap, at which point the most expensive unit to upkeep will be taxed first, regardless of the order in which you built your units. In most cases, upgrading a unit does not affect its upkeep, unless the upgrade added additional models to the squad. Rec is also used to activate power nodes and then add generators to it, which brings us to the next basic resource. Power. Power is used to buy advanced units and upgrades for your units, as well as upgrading your tech tier at the HQ. Units that required power as part of their cost will often require power as part of their reinforcement cost too. Power is generated at a rate of 10 per minute by your HQ. Just like requisition points, power nodes also vary depending on player count. As a solo, power nodes start at 5, the 9 once activated, with each generator adding 10, capping out the total income at 39 per power node. As a duo, they start at 3, then 6 once activated, with 7 per generator, maxing out at 27. As a trio, they start at 2, then 4 when activated, with a 5 per generator, for a total of 19 once the power node is fully upgraded. However, unlike rec points, power nodes do not scale over time. Additionally, the power resource is not taxed by unit upkeep. You'll notice that while the number of the power generator changes as you add generators, your income doesn't actually change until each generator finishes. In building and upgrading a power node, you'll notice that you cannot cancel the building of the power node itself, but you can cancel the generators. In addition, when you cancel a generator, part of the cost invested in adding the generator to the node will be refunded based on how long it's been building. So if it's halfway built, you get half the cost back. Finally, we have the global resource, or red as it is commonly referred to. Red. Red is used to activate global abilities such as buffs, debuffs, damaging abilities, or unit call-ins. The abilities available differ from faction to faction and commander to commander, but all commanders in a given faction share at least one, and in some cases two or three abilities that they all have in common. For example, all Space Marine commanders can use the Drop Pod, Deep Strike Terminator Squad, and Orbital Bombardment abilities with the remaining two abilities differing based on commander. Every faction and commander has access to an expensive nuke which costs 500 red to activate and can be absolutely devastating if used correctly. In most cases, global abilities will be locked behind tech tiers. 
This resource is only generated by models being killed, unless you are playing orcs, in which case it is also generated at the rate of 15 per minute. The amount of red gained depends on the model destroyed. For example, the Chaos Space Marine model nets 14 red to the player that killed it. The owner of a model that was destroyed receives 75% of the kill value. Because of this reduced return, it is usually unworth it to feed models and units to your opponent for the purposes of gaining red for yourself, but in late game scenarios, getting that last bit of red you need to use a critical ability can mean victory or defeat, so use this tactic sparingly and only when necessary. There are some other tidbits of information you should know when it comes to capping and decapping points. General tips and tricks. Here are some tips for managing point captures, whether it be requisition, power, or victory points. Only infantry and commanders can capture points, with one exception. The Imperial Guard Sentinel is the only vehicle in the game that can interact with points, and it can only decapture them. All other vehicles cannot capture or decapture any points. Units classified as vehicles are ones that have vehicle armor, like a Predator tank or a Carnifex. Pyranid Ripper Swarms and Spore Mines cannot capture or decapture points, even though they are infantry. Only one unit can be contributing to the capture at a time. This means you can't accelerate the capture by stacking multiple units on one point. However, in extreme cases, it can be worth it to do so just to make sure that you will immediately continue capturing with a second unit should the first unit be knocked back or destroyed. I only ever do this when the victory point score gets down to single or double digits and the match is very, very close. The only other time it is worthwhile to stack multiple units on a capturing point is if you intend to hand off the capture or decapture from one unit to another. I do this very frequently. When a unit stops capturing a point, the capture progress will quickly degrade back to neutral. So the advantage here is that we skip the degradation process and immediately start capping with a different unit. In the case of the Space Marine faction, the Tactical Squad will cap and decap 50% faster than any other unit, so handing off the capture to Tacticals is often useful. Points will be decaptured while invisible, but invisible units will be very briefly revealed at the start of the decap before going invisible again. Invisible units will be fully revealed for the duration of the actual capture. Abilities and weapons that knockback models can stop units from capping or decapping. There are two types of knockback, weapon knockback and ability knockback, which are not always synonymous with weapons and abilities respectively. However, for our purposes, all we need to know is that models that are knocked far enough away from a point will stop capturing, and if that means no models are close enough to continue capturing, the cap will be halted. This does mean that if some models are unaffected by the knockback, the capture can continue. You can cancel the progress an enemy unit has made towards capturing a point by beginning your own capture, as long as the enemy unit is no longer capping. Otherwise, it is first come, first serve. This can be essential in critical moments to ensure victory or stave off defeat. And that's all for the fundamentals of Dawn of War 2's economy and point capture mechanics. Most of my information comes from personal experience, and I also utilize the DAO2 wiki and the detailed tooltips mod for some of the more specific data points. I'll link those down below for you. I really hope you found this video helpful. Please let me know in the comments if there are any specific Dow 2 topics you think would make for a good video. I stream Dawn of War 2 and other games every Wednesday through Friday from 3 to 7 p.m. Pacific Time. Sometimes I go a little later, sometimes I start a little earlier. If you'd like to watch me playing live, check me out on Twitch at MrRipTV. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.